Today, we're gonna to find out if one man can safely and easily load a 5,000 watt generator into the back of a pickup with this little piece of rope. So welcome back, friends. So a few months ago, one of my subscribers contacted me and said, I've got something that's going to amaze you. I am a kind of an old retired farmer turned inventor trying to find a, a way to keep myself occupied and I've come up with something that I think you might like. So he told me a little bit about it and I, you know, to be honest with you, when he was first talking about it, I was under impressed and I said, you know, I don't know if that's, you know, this is the channel for this. Uh, you know, maybe I, I recommended a couple other ones and he was persistent and I'd kind of forgotten about it and lo and behold, he sent one in the mail. <laughs> and so <laughs> I opened it up and I thought it was really cool and I'm looking forward to see what can we do with this thing? You know what this is? This is a mini, beautifully made and machined block and tackle set. And they tell us idle hands are the devil's play things. Look what Albert's come up with. All right, so Albert, so before we start here, this is not a product endorsement. I simply do these things from time to time. We'll come across something that's cool, especially things that are built by our subscribers that I'm happy to share and feature and try out. But if it doesn't work, well, Albert, I'm not gonna give it a very positive review. This is the nifty lift, lift. and so Albert sent a letter here uh, and uh, basically said, I'll just paraphrase it here, that um, uh, try it out, that uh, he has found that this cord here, which is kind of interesting, I've never seen anything like it. It's a little bit fatter than a paracord, not much. About the same, actually. It feels like a paracord with the inside removed. It's a tight, it's kind of a woven deal, but he claims that it has a tensile strength of 1,700 pounds. I don't know, that sounds too good to be true, but um, he goes on to say that they've actually lifted a V8 Chevy, it's a small block Chevy, with this system, this block and tackle. All right, we're gonna find out. So. If you don't know what a block and tackle is, this is, a, this is an old technology here. This has been around since ooh, a long time. I'll bet that they, the Romans used these, I'm pretty sure, and probably it dates way back beyond that. I've even seen pictures of old loggers and farmers that have used large version of these and pulled with a team and actually have pulled stumps out of the ground. They, it is truly uh, incredible. It's at a mechanical advantage. And so basically, I don't know all the physics to it, but I've used it to my advantage several times, especially winching, that each time, this is the, the line that we're gonna pull here, each time you go through a pulley, it doubles your strength. So essentially me being a 210 pound person, if I were to put this on a pulley, I could pull, I could double that. I could pull 420. And if I, double, if I put another pulley on it, I could double it again. So that gives us the tremendous pulling strength with this mechanical advantage. Now the downside of it is of course you have to pull a lot further. So you pull this a long ways for this to go a short distance. You can kind of see that, kind of the principle of spokes on a wheel, but that is what a block and tackle is used. You'll see it on sailing ships, you'll see it, and they still, I think they probably still use it on, on maybe some modern sailing ships, but the old ones, you'll see the old blocks, and when you read the stories, you know, during when they had sea battles, you know, those things were always coming down, guys, you know, getting shot down and hitting, hitting on the head, big heavy wood blocks. So it's just something that has been around and used for a long time. Now, I've never seen one this small before, not one that was quality. I mean, I've seen little silly ones like you get out of pot metal at, the, at hardware stores, but this is really beautiful, actually. So it's got uh, it's all aluminum and it's very nicely machined. It's, it's actually very well built. It looks like it's got great hardware. I was curious to what the pulleys are made out of, but I, I can't see. But it's also, he's got these, these little beaners, these are steel, and these are pretty tough. If you look here, I like these. I've used these before. You see how that is grooved and cut in there? So that when you start putting pressure on this and you run this up there, it's very strong. It's very strong. It's not, not going to deform unless it's under a great, great load. I don't know what the strength is on these guys or where they're made, but they're, they are steel. But that is, that's, you know, it's actually very nice. There's a lot of work that went into that. Everything fits really well. I like the way the beaner rotates here without binding up. It's all anodized. This is kind of interesting. So right here, this is a cleat. 
just like on a, we have on a boat, you know, our fishing boats that you would have that would, as you pull it down there, it's got teeth in it that will, you can lock that rope down in there. And I, uh, it's made out of plastic, but it is held in there with some really high grade Allen bolts. That's, a, that's really pretty, the way that was done. A question, I wonder about that. Is that gonna hold tight enough? Cause this is flat. I don't know, we'll find out. But overall, it looks nice. So what could a guy use this for? So this little case, everything fits in there. And he gave me a couple of these guys here. What could you use this for? Well, let's say you did need to load something in the back of a truck. You didn't have help. You didn't have any ramps. You didn't have a, uh, um, a forklift or a tractor. Can you load? I mean, I, I couldn't put a generator in the back of my truck by myself uh, without a mechanical advantage of something. I'd have to go find some ramps or something. So I'm curious to see, will this lift that generator in the back of the truck? Man, Albert, if this thing fails and you drop my, drop my 5,000 watt generator, I'm gonna be very cross with you. Albert, I hope you did your homework because I don't think that this generator will survive a four or five foot drop from the hoist. What could go wrong? So for a pulling point, we'll mount the block and tackle up here to granddad's old block. You see this up here? I've had this for, granddad gave that to me a long time ago. That is from World War II. That is a Yale spur geared block rated at 2,000 pounds, I believe it is. You can't hardly buy quality like that anymore. Interesting story. Granddad, uh, after the war, so in Oregon, uh, the Oregon shipyards were producing Liberty ships like crazy. I think even towards the end of the war, they were producing a ship a day for the war effort. And so when the war was over, there was a huge surplus of all this equipment and they had a great sale down at the shipyard and Granddad went down and he bought this Yale block, this spur block. Uh, and then set it up at his shop. And we used to use it when I was a kid for pulling engines. Granddad was a mechanic and we would do side jobs on the weekends. And I remember that hanging up there in his car shed and I, I have it now. So that is really a, a cool piece of history. But we'll use the hook here be, uh, just to uh, secure our, our little easy lift here. And look, a little difference in size between these two, huh? Okay, so now down here we'll hook up. I couldn't get it over the loop for the generator lift. So I've got this locking got D D ring in there. I'll lock this down here. I have to say I'm a little bit anxious about this. Here. I don't man, it looks so small. That's those generators are heavy. I'm going to put some gloves on because this, this line is so small. That's actually, I mean, that is almost, I'd say it's almost smaller than paracord 550 cord. And I'm, I've got a stick here too, because I've, I don't think I could have the grip to hold on to this tiny, tiny line. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, oh goodness, that brake makes me nervous, that cleat. I'll wrap this a couple times um, to give myself a little bit of better ability to pull. Okay, you ready? Goodness. How high do we go? Oh, it's creaking. Okay, so the brake, let's see, I pulled a little bit too high there. We have to push in to engage that brake. Well, it does hold. Makes me nervous though. So I don't know how much I'm pulling. I'd say I weigh what I weigh, two, 215, 220. I'm not pulling all my, I'll release the brake here. Like on a lap pull machine, it probably feels like I'm pulling maybe, maybe 80 pounds. I don't know. So you have to kind of do short pulls because you have to engage that brake by pushing it in which means you have to kind of get under the load a little bit. Oh, 
Ooh, how high? Do... I guess we don't need to lift it any higher than that. We, we can see that it works. Lock that brake in. That brake actually works pretty good. Do I dare let go of it? Well, how about that? So how could this be useful? Would it be useful on a homestead or if you needed to load something, like maybe like at a elk hunting camp or something in you? I mean, I think you would take a ramp with you, but it's actually easier to carry this thing. I mean, where a ramp takes up a lot of space. Now, I don't know that I'd want to load stuff with it all the time uh, over ramps and things, but I think where it would really come in handy would be just to throw in maybe a toolbox. It is holding, isn't it? I'm not holding it here. It's not tied off. It's just locked back on that brake. Uh, it would be a, a good thing to have in a toolbox for, for kind of an emergency lifting type of device. You know, you could hook it, have it throw it onto a chain or around a tree branch or something, and you could lift a lot of things. I hadn't really, nothing really comes to mind, you know, what I'd use it for, but it would be that thing that, that comes up in life that you know you can't account for that having the ability to lift something as heavy I don't know what it'll lift will it lift a thousand pounds what's a, what's a small block Chevy way with heads and crank and everything in it probably it's got to be close to 900 pounds thousand pounds is it 800 pounds to be able to lift an engine like that with a little small block and this this little cord is pretty pretty imp pretty impressive really that's cool. Nice build quality though. I, I like that. All right, Albert, you did good. You didn't drop my generator. And this is the, <laughs> this is the nifty lift. So I'm doing this as, uh, as just a favor to him. I'll uh, link over to his website and uh, just go over there and tell him hi and, and uh, check it out. But it, I, it's kind of cool. But the whole concept, I kind of wanted to share that with you too, how a block and tackle works. This is just on a tiny, tiny scale but it it did work it did work good all right so if i wanted to lower it i'll just pull that brake off whoops wait a minute i'll run out of run out of room if i do that we'll come down here and do it break pull the brake off Pretty cool, I have to say, that's pretty cool. That works really good. All right, good job, Albert. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoy uh, these videos. As I say, we don't ask for fan funding, we don't ask for uh, Patre Patreon donors, we just ask that you guys comment and support the channel uh, with your thumbs up and likes or whatever they are now. Um, and it keeps us going, it keeps us motivated. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.